What is going on everybody is Alex coming back at you with another video and today we are going to be doing the biggest winners and losers from the combine day number one. So if you guys are new, it would be great if you guys could join me, like, comment, subscribe. You guys know how to use YouTube at this point. There was an awesome video I posted earlier today, which was a mock draft as well as an awesome interview with a division one starting edge rusher for Washington State, Brendan Jackson. Feel free to show some love and check that out as well. But uh, I just actually streamed for about six and a half hours with you guys on the Discord. Hop over there. It's absolutely free. I do stuff over there like that whenever I get the chance. But let's just jump right into this. Uh, formatting is going to be a little bit weird because, you know, it, you, I don't need to explain to you guys how this works. But uh, looking at the winners, there's only been a couple that were actually like really big winners. And there were a couple that were only really big losers. I'll describe some honorable mentions in here like Trent Simpson, but we already knew he was athletic. But uh, let's just go in. Kalijah Kansi, defensive lineman from Pitt. Uh, he performed amazingly, but the real thing that was what stood out was the fact that he was over six foot. And uh, that was the big one. Six foot, 280 pounds. Six foot one, 280 pounds. He obviously tested at a 4, 6, 7, 40 official. That is insane. Obviously, that's great. But, you know, he is testing out as well as he needed to. Very short arms, though. That is definitely the concern. He'll still be a DPR. But still, looking at the teams that I would love to see him go to, the Eagles, the, uh, I mean, obviously him replacing where Milton Williams will probably try to be in the long term, Javon Hargrave. That's probably the ideal role for him. Then, of course, the Texans. I would love to see D'Amico Ryans get his hands on a project like this. And then also, I mean, the Lions being able to get that one extra guy, never a bad thing. So next we got Edita Miwa Adebaware. Uh, this guy tested 449 and 280 pounds. That's ridiculous. Uh, obviously, he's in a speed freak. His arm length is like 34 inches as well. So uh, it's honestly the only issues with him is the fact that he wasn't a super freak there at Northwestern. Looked incredible at the Senior Bowl. Someone who I definitely need to update in terms of where I have him on my board. But uh, yeah, spectacular play, spectacular. It looks great. And then, you know, again, it's just where do you put him inside or edge rusher? He has the speed to be an edge rusher, but you could use that 449 speed on the inside. And he did play very phenomenally. Uh, I would love to see a team like the Chiefs be able to use him on the edge or interior. That'd be awesome to see that flexibility. D'Amico, still love to do that. And since the Carolina Panthers are switching to a 3-4, would love to see him potentially take those flex wraps on the inside at that 3-ish tech spot and then move out to a linebacker edge rusher role and just be able to use that freakish size versus those tackles. And then last but not least of the winners today is Nolan Smith. Nolan Smith obviously tested, I believe, 4-4-3. He tested, in, or no, 4-3-9. I actually had the prediction that he might have beat, we might have gotten into the four threes, uh, which is awesome. My grade is definitely not NA on him. He actually does have a grade, so that's on me for not putting in his official grade. But again, simple graphics error. Uh, he's right now graded at my number 22 spot on my big board, or number 24 spot, excuse me. And uh, he might be moving up a little bit. I already had him as the most athletic edge rusher in the class, and you know he definitely proved that today. Obviously, extreme speed. He actually had some good arm length to him, over 32 inches. And, you know, he does actually boost some weight a little bit. Uh, issue is his injury to pectoral. That was one of his primary usage. Like, his best benefits was the fact that he was so strong in the chest. I want to see how he bounces back from that. Will he have some timidity or timidness when it comes to being able to throw guys off because he's afraid of re-tearing his chest? And then, um, obviously, at sub-240. You are a little, a little bit scheme dependent. And uh, we could see a team like the Rams that were looking to be able to grab somebody in that 235 range. Uh, you could also see, again, you're looking for outside linebackers and edge rushers there in Carolina. Definitely think that would be a good place as well. And then the Eagles, Hassan Reddick, it's literally a hand in glove fit. But that is going to be the biggest winners. Other guys to be able to mention. I mean, technically, Jack Campbell, he ran the four sixes. He had a really crazy 37-inch vertical. I'm excited to see that. I thought he was going to test very similar. Maybe not in that terms of that explosive, but that was really good to see. Lucas Van Ness, he's somebody who was kind of a tweener. Uh, underwhelmed when it comes to explosiveness. Like, did not perform very well at all in terms of his vert as well as his broad. 
But when it comes to the agility drills, he definitely did shine out. So uh, before everything was official, I was going to actually put him in my biggest losers. Ended up performing really well in terms of athleticism. Overall, just, again, we kind of knew he was an athletic freak, but it is a little bit worrisome to, you kind of flipped it. I thought he was a little bit less agile, but more explosive. And he tested the opposite way. So I don't really know how to take that. But um, yeah, it's just, it's really unfortunate. And going right into the biggest losers. This has been a man who I stuck my neck out for, had an amazing regular season, bullying the likes of Broderick Jones, who's a lock first round tackle. And somebody who, again, he was pretty much the identity of the show. And you do game tape from this year and he was phenomenal. That does that mean he's a bad player because he sucked in the offseason? No. But when it comes to Isaiah McGuire, he certainly is not the player that he needed to develop into. 476, that is perfectly fine. That was the rough estimate for his speed. Still gonna drop a lot. Um, just it's extremely unfortunate because this offseason has been absolutely atrocious to Isaiah. It was a time for him to really solidify himself as that first round talent at that 270 pound frame. And, uh, you know, this 476 at 270 is perfectly fine. We don't need to have a bunch of Adida Miwas at 449, but it's still really underwhelming. You saw the drills. They're really underwhelming. It's it just sucks. The senior bowl was underwhelming. It just looks like you look at his Instagram story. The guys he's training with are not those top tier players that you really want to see your guys training with. And it's pretty obvious that they didn't prepare him very well. In terms of his technique, in terms of his overall athletic ability, he's certainly underwhelmed exponentially compared to what he should have been. So, uh, yeah, for somebody who I thought was going to be a top 10 pick based on how he played in the regular season and moving into a potentially awesome offseason rise, uh, he ended up tanking and he's kind of falling flat on his face. Now, I don't even think he might even be a mid fourth. Uh, a little bit unfortunate, but, you know, we are in a very good edge class. I'm thinking that there are other dudes. Uh, there's an Eastern Carolina guy who uh, tested out very well athletically. Could be a guy who jumps Isaiah McGuire. But, you know, that's kind of the range he's in. And it's really sad because you look at that game tape and it's like, who the hell? Like, there's no way this player and that player are the same guy. Especially since Isaiah McGuire has been comp to Preston Smith by Lance Zerline. So, uh, just kind of sad. It is kind of sad. He did do well in terms of vertical jump, I think over 36 inches, but just overall didn't compete the way we really wanted him to. Then next, Britton Cox Jr. Uh, yeah, this guy performed way worse than even um, than Isaiah McGuire. I think he's, a, I guess, a bigger loser, but it's just because it hits a little bit home that, you know, that's why I'm going to include him. But Britton Cox, he was somebody who did not test well at all, like 488 speed. Just you look at the drills as well. And it's like, man, he does not look good. And then you add that to the fact that he dismissed himself pretty much from the team because he was getting pissy about his role. And overall, it's just not looking good for him. I want to go to pretty much send him to a place that could either be desperate enough for ha to have him like play some reps here and there or a place that can handle those type of personalities. I think Bill Belichick and Pete Carroll both can handle that. So you know, it is what it is. I don't have an NA grade on him either, but he does have like probably like a 68. Doesn't really matter. He's probably going to be UDFA. And uh, that's really unfortunate because he had some really good play there at, at Florida. And he's just not the same type of player as he was a year or two ago. And then KJ Henry, it is not going mid second to late first. So ignore that again, simple uh, graphics error. It's what happens when you're an hour six and a half of a live stream trying to do some graphics work. Uh, I think that he's going to be a UDFA. I think he tested out in the higher four sixes, four seven. And for somebody where he doesn't have elite arm length or anything, he doesn't have anything that stands out. And he was just somebody where he had some really good production there at Clemson. He had some good pressures here and there, but it really was based on the fact they are scheming away from Miles Murphy, trying to keep away from that defensive interior. He was easily the worst player out on that edge, but there still was production there. So I could love to see him maybe as a UDFA or a late seventh round pick. Maybe you can get him a little bit earlier, maybe a sixth rounder. Uh, but again, Patriots, I know that they're pretty good at playing money ball, so to speak, getting the most out of the defenders. The Titans always need help at that edge rushing position, especially if Bud Dupree might not be there. And then the Chargers uh, having him be 
an understudy of Khalil Mack would never be a bad choice. But realistically, there was like nobody who had a really bad day that was having some hype. Obviously, there's a the guy, Tyler Lacey, who was an edge rusher, who ran 5-1-5. Uh, Siaki Ika, I don't, I mean, the dude was already just absolutely useless as it is. So I don't really know why people are surprised by the fact that he had the second slowest time at a 5-3-9. Tom Brady clears him by 0.2 seconds. It's it's honestly like I kind of expected that. I think a lot of us did, especially if you actually watch the tape. He's really not that good. So, you know, finally people are starting to realize you can just go to 7-11 and buy up one of these dudes and just bring them to a training camp. Or you can just end up getting somebody in UDFA like Mark Juan McCall who, you know, can plug the middle just as well. And he's like literally a tenth of the cost and, you know, somebody you can keep for the long term rather than spending a second round pick on him. So hopefully that can clarify some things. Don't really think anybody else had like a crazy day. Owen Papo ran a 4-3-9. That's great for him. Uh, has had a lot of injury history there. And, um, you know, maybe that's somebody I could have included in the biggest winners. But Again, there wasn't really anybody who stood out as like, a, oh my God, that is like awful. So I really had to stretch for these biggest losers. They're still running in the four sixes or early or like light four sevens. Not really that big of a deal. They honestly did a really good job. And we're starting to get a little desensitized to good athletes. And I'm definitely one to be willing to be blamed for it. But, you know, it is what it is. I want to thank you guys so much for watching. I know it's a short video, but. Uh, there really wasn't that many huge winners and like guys who are boosting their draft stock, like maybe Owen Papo, as I was saying, maybe from a seventh round pick up to a fourth. Like that's a pretty big swing, but this is a really shit linebacker class. God only knows he probably could have been a fifth round pick and moved up to a fourth. It is what it is, but I'm super excited for tomorrow because it's, I believe, DBs and I have a lot of DBs that I am dying to know their actual speed. So come join the Discord and come and hang out tomorrow. Because, um, yeah, that one I am super stoked about. Let me know what you guys think, of course, down below. Who should have been on the list? Of course, there's plenty of guys who could have been. Thank you guys so much for watching. See you on the far side. Peace.